Tonight's notes are about triangles and parallel lines. So there are two theorems that connect parallel lines to triangles. First is the mid-segment theorem. To understand the mid-segment theorem, we need to start with what a mid-segment is. So a mid-segment is, is a segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So every triangle is going to have three mid-segments. So what we found is if this is a mid-segment, this point right here is the very middle of this line, making this piece equal to this piece. This point right here is the very middle of this side. So this piece is the same length as this piece over here. Last, this point right here is the very middle of this third side, making this piece congruent or equal to that piece right there. The three mid-segments together, if you draw all three of them in, it makes a triangle, and it's called the mid-segment triangle. Now that we know what a mid-segment is, let's talk about what the mid-segment triangle theorem is. The mid-segment triangle theorem is a mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the side of the triangle and is half the length of that side. So in this triangle below, in big triangle ABC, what we have is we have a mid-segment drawn in. We know the mid-segment, this is the mid-segment because this is equal to that. So AD is the same length as DB. I know that BE is the same length as EC because that's given as well. Therefore, this is a mid-segment. If it is a mid-segment, these two lines are parallel. So that's where the theorem comes in. This is a mid-segment. AC is parallel to DE. Additionally, DE is half the length of AC. So one half times the length of AC equals the length of DE. So a problem that would use mid-segment theorem or what it might look like is find the value of X. And it gives you that the length of AD is 7 and DB is 7. It gives you the length of BE is 6 and EC is 6. Because this is the same as that, and this one's the same as that one, I know this is a mid-segment. Additionally, it tells us that these two lines are parallel, so that just enforces that it's a mid-segment. That means that this length is half of the total of this one. So one-half times AC equals DE. One-half times X equals 9. So X has to equal 18. Another example would be what would be the length of BE. So this already tells you that this segment is half of the length of the side of the triangle and these two lines are parallel. Knowing that, I know this is the mid-segment. If this entire length is 14 and this is the mid-segment, each piece here is half that distance, which is 7. Therefore, BE has a length of 7. The next theorem we're going to talk about is the proportionality theorem. All right. So if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, then it divides the two sides proportionally. This means, given this triangle here, that B to G has the same proportion as C to H, which has the same proportion as E to F. I wrote them in a different order, but it really doesn't matter. They're all exactly the same. They make the same ratio. Getting a better, closer look, not as crowded, we have this triangle here. And what we see is that triangle ABC is a large triangle. Fill in the big one. ABC is the large triangle. And the small triangle would be DEF. So the proportionality theorem is saying that the smaller triangle is proportional to the large triangle. Therefore, D is proportional to A, has the same ratio as B, E has to B, 
the same ratio as F to C. So you could set it up either way. So an example would look something like this. Given this triangle here, where we see this is 2, zoom back in a little bit, this has a length of 2, this is 6, this has a length of 9, and this is x. It wants me to tell, it wants us to figure out what is x equal. All right, so it, we already know that QR is parallel to RS, or excuse me, ST. So we know that PS as a ratio to PQ is the same as PF as a ratio to PR. Excuse me, that's PT. Sorry, I miswrote it. So when we set up the ratio, we're going to set up 6 over 8, because it's 6 over the total length, which is 8, equals 9 over the total length, which is going to be 9 plus x. Next, you cross multiply, so you end up with 6 times 9 plus x equals 9 times 8, which is 72. You can distribute the 6, and you get 54 plus 6x equals 72. You subtract the 54 from both sides, and you're left with 6x equals 18. And once you divide the 6, you're left with x equals 3. If you have any questions about the notes this evening, then we can talk about it tomorrow in class. Don't forget to use that space on the side to write them down. Thanks.